Sat Nam. Welcome to Soul Book. I mean, School of Nod. <laughs> and Soul Book. Soul Book's here too with us. Yeah. Well, in fact, we have to share. We're going to share. So for those who are tuning in, just uh, bear with us for a minute or two as we connect with our various groups here on, in beautiful space book land. Sync it up, link it up, share it out. We are Hariram <laughs> and Satkirtankar. So happy to be with you at this really magical time in the, the Festival of Lights. Yes, in between solstice and mm. Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Okay, let's sync it up here. So today we're talking about sex magic. If anybody knows oh. anyone that might be Ooh. interested, feel free to share it out. It helps our yeah. algorithms because we've been uh, dinged quite a bit here on Facebook. Yeah, that algorithm <laughs> dinging. <clears throat> algorithm stuff. Censor book. And, and this is part three of a series of four presentations live that we've, we're doing each Tuesday. So next week will be the fourth and final one. So you want to make sure not to miss that because live is the best way, of course. Um, then there is an event page on School of Nod for this series called we call the Soul of Tantra. That's right, our soul is. I'll do soul work. You're going to do soul work. <laughs> Don't we love social media? <laughs> I know Seth Kirtan does, and I do too. That's what brought us together, so. <laughs> yeah. It was a very special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ability to connect from all over the world. Oh, really. I don't like the censorship on it, though. No. <laughs> Not at all. No. Everyone deserves a voice. Don't you agree? I think so. Well, I shared it on my page, and did we share it with our groups and such? Shared it with Soul Book. Now I'm sharing with my page. Paste. Okay. Is that everything? Mm -hmm. That's All right, thing. so who's with so. us? <laughs> Feel free to comment. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love yeah. to read this yeah, we like tapestry it. of <laughs> souls watching in. We'd love to know where people are on this beautiful planet. Okay. Um, All right. Here we are. We like to tune in the Adi Mantra. We have the Adi Shakti. I mean, this is a bit of a glare on it. It's like a symbol. Adi means primal, the beginning, the first. And the Adi Mantra is the first mantra that we chant in every single ceremony that we do. And we consider this right here a ceremony. Because every class we teach and every session we do with clients. And the Adi Mantra goes Om Namo Gurudev Namo. Om is another version of the eternal vibration, similar to Om, the more activated version, where we vibrate in the sinus cavities and our whole head is a conch shell. Om Namo, meaning a bow, I call upon Gurudev, connects us with the golden chain of the lineage of Kundalini Yoga, as well as our inner Guru, the transparent Guru within, the transparent Guru that's always with us. Mary Manson is Hello, welcome. Us. Glad to see you too. Well, <laughs> we can't see you right now, but um, we do have an option to bring people on. Uh, we haven't done that yet in this series, but there is that option. Uh, Although the technology is always changing. Have you noticed that? How they do that a lot, a lot of updates, mm -hmm. which have seemed more confusing <laughs> than anything. Uh, always changing the format on Facebook. It's always fun. So anyway, the Adi Mantra. On the mo, the day of no mo. <laughs> it's a kind of tribal version. But, you know, 
Yeah. So I didn't finish. Oh. Ang namo Guru Dev. Guru Dev is the transparent Guru, and then namo again. I bow and call upon. And so this is a way to tune in to the lineage as well as our higher self and our inner guidance. So bring our hands together. Even more simple translation of namo and name, which we'll translate in a moment, is I name. We name. Yeah, the, the, the root is right there. We name, we're invoking this presence, divine presence. So hands in prayer at the heart. Centering into your breath. Nice deep inhale. Big exhale. Again, and healthy. Oh, Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Protection. Have you ever seen this with chant camp? No, yet. We'll continue. Okay. Yeah, because we uh, we started something called chant camp a year ago. We're celebrating one year. Uh, it's been a beautiful adventure so far. We're looking to call in more people, more mantra enthusiasts, especially those who have an interest in leading kirtan some form of kirtan, song circles, which we also incorporate as our kirtan sound bath. So we also um, are mentoring people who want to lead sound healing, to practice sound healing as a private practice or to incorporate and or incorporate this in your kirtan and any other group experiences. The power of nod, the sound current, mantra, yeah. <laughs> I get really excited so I'm speaking about it. It's a passion. What brought us together? Yeah, and doors for Chant Camp are opening soon. We only open the doors once mm -hmm. or twice a year. Mm -hmm. And 
this is a chance to jump in and join us. It's a monthly monthly membership. Contain your enthusiasm, darling. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, yeah. I'm good enemy. You got good enemy. Sat good enemy. City good day enemy. This creates a bubble of light and protection around each and every one of us, as well as the sacred virtual space that we're creating here. I'm good in the man. God, good in the man. I'm good in the man. City, good in the man. I'm good in the man. God, good. laugh and I, if I make a little slip with a um, piece like this that I played so many times, right? But it was fun. Because I think there I, I got, I was got a little ahead of myself that this flourish that we, we like to do at the end of this particular uh, Magla Charn mantra composition, which is Siddhi Guru Deve, right? <laughs> the climax, right? And, um, it's interesting because we, yeah, we, we want to speak about sex magic today, because uh, that's what we planned as in our series, and and everything is related to to the to the word to the nod, and specifically with us, we're getting a, <laughs> a bit of a breakthrough last night. I feel even more clear what brought Sat Kirtan and I together. Is not only our love of nod, <laughs> the sound current, mantra, vibration. Even more specifically, our love of theater, specifically musical theater and cinema, of course. And the, 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 <laughs> the movie that, that uh, really helped to, to cement our connection, really, when we found out that we both shared this passion and this history with this, interestingly, with our parents, and mm -hmm. introducing us to this movie at a very young age, both of us, and to the music is. The sound of music. The sound of music. And Who's just, a fan? Raise your hand. <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> with the sound of music. <laughs> or do, a 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 do
Oh, it's, just a, and it's a love story, of course. It's beautiful. And, but today is funny. <laughs> just today, we've spoken about it many times. We've watched the movie together now, probably a couple of times at least, and, and sung all the songs together. Um, I think today, I really made the, finally connected with the, the title, the actual title of this musical, which is first a, a stage play. I think, I believe. Broadway. Yeah, on Broadway. It probably started on Broadway. Right now. Very successful. I think Julie Andrews was in, the, she was in the original Broadway production. Uh, the title is The Sound of Music, <laughs> which is actually a very good definition for not. Right? <laughs> and we are, we are the school of not. So. That's right. Um, it's funny, The Sound of Music. Oh, I just heard, that's the drum. <laughs> it's, I, I put it in the sun, I just heard the... So that means it clicks when it's ready. ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so who's a fan of Sound of Music? Give us an emoji. Yeah, if comment. you're watching the replay, that's, you can still... Hi, Fall Brother. Thank hey. you for sharing the beloved that... Master Yogi Bhajan. I just want to read the quote. Oh, really? You're a master of your destiny. You are the prediction of your horoscope. You are the leader of your day. And you are the light of your life. Why you do you keep call so? Why you do keep it? Yeah, beautiful quotes, brother. Yeah, we're Harpal Singh and I have been speaking about doing a, a proper interview. Could be a video interview. Um, the first uh, impetus, inspiration was to do a radio interview. We have a. Radio, we might as well <laughs> mention that too. Uh, we got the nod is the name of our internet radio program on Podbean and it's offered on iTunes the, and uh, Spotify and YouTube. Yes, <laughs> we have some really great Good interviews. Point. We actually we got a we got a double uh, two part interview coming out very soon to begin the the new year, and hopefully Harpal will be featured very soon on that same channel. So thank you, Brad. Let's make it happen. Because he has a, some amazing stories to tell. Um, can't wait. Oh, yeah. Fasten your seatbelts, everybody. <laughs> yeah. We are the 3HO. The 3HO is alive and well. Um, you know, I can't help seeing the parallel with the Patriots, the, 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 this amazing Patriot movement that's happening in the United States and, and really around the world. The whole world is watching the United States, this amazing scene. It's incredible, right? I know this because I've, I've been speaking to, we have many people here uh, at Atlan from Europe, all over, you know, many countries, and everybody's aware, right? That's why I say Donald Trump right now is probably more popular, at, or as popular as Jesus Christ. For better or for worse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but partially, because we this is related, all related to the School of Nod, too, and our, our commitment to, to source and to spirit, to soul. To truth. Right? Donald Trump is, he is a religious man, love him or hate him, he, he, he really walks the talk. He'll go to churches when he has the opportunity, when, he, like, when he's doing rallies and traveling. He loves to go to services and people really feel that. And this part of his appeal, why he's so popular, contrary to mainstream media nonsense, right? um, his love of, of Christianity in his case. For me, it's Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. Christ life. You know, most people celebrate, well, it's Christmas and Easter when we celebrate the birth of Christ. Now, some people get upset with that, right? Forgetting that it, it's not so much about physical birth, right? We all know he's a Pisces, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, it's to celebrate the rebirth which is Christ consciousness, which is enlightenment, yeah? In the sea, in the Festival of Lights. It's, it's available to everybody, everyone, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Christ consciousness to me is now, it's like a grid, it's a, it's a force field mm -hmm. around the planet that any of us can tap into and access through our hearts. That's it. That's, Harpal shared this quote, mm. you are the light in your life. And, and Yogi Bhajan uh, 
often, um, like, like any master, like Osho, uh, would quote or, or make reference to the master we call Yeshua. It's interesting that uh, Jesus, the word, the name Jesus comes from Greek, as does Christ. Well, the root word of Christ, it's, it's, it's actually Greek too, it's Christos. And my understanding of Christos is, and this is actually in, in your, your birth name too, right? is knowing, one, one is awareness again. So we call it Kundalini Yoga, the Yoga of Awareness. Christos is simply knowing, it is awareness. What is awareness? Good question. Yeah, for me, we can define awareness as God, presence, as grace, to be in grace, to be a channel. Right? That's why we, we say to, to all of our peeps, our uh, followers, our students, uh, clients, that, that you are God, you are a channel, and, and why we, we're here to, hopefully, to inspire and empower people to remember who they truly are, that we are all channels. We are all representatives of the divine, children of God, yes? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we're here to sing it. <laughs> we like to sing and chant a lot. And we'll also talk about sex magic in this podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> and creative visualization, <laughs> as it relates to creative visualization. So we're going to keep it um, pure, because our, our form of Tantra is, is all about the heart, the purity of an open heart. Mm -hmm. Anybody else has anything? Just, just, this is just, the soul just, of Tantra. Good. Part three in our four-part series. Part one, what do we cover? Just a little recap. And all these replays are on the School of Nods. You can check them out. You have to join the group. No, it's on the School of Nod We're Facebook of page. Nod. So all they have to do mm -hmm. is go there, go to videos, and it's the yeah. last three videos. We might share some of these or parts of these on our YouTube channel. We also have a YouTube channel for the School of Nod. Yes. So yeah, let's do that. So part yeah. one was... Was about... Anybody to, know? Uh. <laughs> 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 okay, head it on. <laughs> <laughs> that treat her as queen and him as king, which is to see the divine, right? We're, again, that divine marriage of spirit and state, right? That the, to be regal is to be sacred, to be of, to come from the spirit, as a true leader should, to, to, and to recognize that in one another, that we are divine regal beings. We come from source, you know? Amen. Satnam. And then the second session was... The second part was all about stamina and Ooh. sensitivity. That was a good one. Well, I, actually, I did that one alone. <laughs> you did. You did. Um, I was not feeling well that day. That was a solo. Um, she was, Sal Kirtan was with me in spirit and actually helped with some of the technical aspects. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, I, I found it quite inspiring. <laughs> uh, had some good uh, feedback on that one as well. Yes. So we spoke about the lingam and the yoni. Is it okay to say that? Sure did. And it sure is. <laughs> as long as people will allow us. Yeah. We don't have to use the uh, the Latin term. It's about respect. And, you know, all of our teachings, the teachings that we like to share, have that essence of purity. Just not to be serious at all, really. Right? Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Well, to create that safe space, that pure space where we can be free to, to laugh and, and to make fun. Right? That life is a play. And someone. Which MD. leads us to the fourth. Welcome, MD. Is it MD? The fourth. Um, oh, next week? Yeah. The fourth oh. session, which will be all about play. So stay That's tuned true. for Leela. That's going to be really week. fun. We're excited about that. And so this week we're talking about 
sex magic, creative visualization <laughs> to the power of two. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a nice continuation from the last uh, session when I spoke about stamina, sensitivity, how Kundalini yoga provides such a powerful platform, foundation for our, pra our sacred practice, whether we're talking about Red Tantra or simply creation, when creating, we spoke about kirtan, co-creating kirtan, to hold space for a group of any size, one needs stamina and sensitivity to be sensitive to the needs of the group, at the same time have the stamina, the strength to hold that container, which I think we do quite well. Oh, yeah. I think so. Thank you, sir. Yes. <laughs> it's a real joy to, to, to share this. It was part of my, my vision for a long time before finally meeting Sat Kirtan to co-facilitate with my, my beloved. And ideally the vision was that we were both in a similar place of, of self-awareness and inner strength and sensitivity that, that is nurtured and supported by our, our practice. In this case, Kundalini Yoga primarily. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and how chant. important it is to not only have our own individual practice, but then come together and practice together. We love yes. to chant Japji together. That's oh, yeah. our go-to. We love Japji. Favorite practice to do together. <sighs> we do it uh, in a tantric way where we each exchange almost as a call and response, each line of Japji back and forth. Well, there's a call this one also, isn't it? Mm -hmm. isn't it? I, it's yeah. just not repeating what the other person is oh, saying. Oh, yeah. It's no, moving yeah. along, reading mm -hmm. throughout the, uh, the text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it seems like when we do it this way, because this is how we always do it, really, at least when we're chanting alone, <clears throat> but we can do this in a group too. It seems that it feels so perfect, the call and response aspect, the tantric aspect of Japji, that Nanak <laughs> designed it that way. It works so well, mm -hmm. yeah? Anyway. Yeah, so sex magic then builds on the, the foundation, which is our, our spiritual practice, a shared spiritual practice. As I've cared to mention, is the ideal and what we look to inspire in, in other couples that were calling in to the School of Nod programs here and, and online. Because um, we do we do Tantra play shops. In fact, we have one coming up next week <laughs> here at beautiful San Marcos La Laguna. This, this Sunday. It's this, oh, this it's week. this week. <laughs> <laughs> January 3rd. Wait, what day is it? <laughs> December 29th, darling. Oh boy. It's Tuesday and play shop is on Sunday. Sunday. We have <laughs> yes. le it's less than a week away. <laughs> but doesn't time, time gets a little bit, <laughs> even more. Right? At this one. <laughs> uh, are you guys ready for 2021? If you, if yes, type, <laughs> type yes or bye bye 2020 in the, in the comments. <laughs> I'm ready. We have, oh, we are the number of viewers. We have nine viewers now. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. MD. Yes, MD awesome. says yes. Is that is that your first name? MD. Are you a doctor? Medical doctor? Is that MD? Or? Well. Looks like MD. Small. See. See <laughs> yeah. We're, tell us what, where you're at, what's happening with you, What uh, if you have any questions, comments about creative visualization and how it applies to sex magic or perhaps better to say how sex magic applies to creative visualization in sacred committed relationship i know that that could be like a taboo ah. for some it was for me for Who many years commitment <laughs> I, I'm not into that kind of thing. I, I, <laughs> how did you say it? 
Yeah, there's a lot of negative associations now. And I had it for many years. My parents divorced when I was 16, even before the, the separation started, while I was 15. Coincidentally, that's the same time that I started getting into a lot of trouble, you know, vandalism, stupid things that teenagers do, and smoking drugs, and, you know, getting into all this, you know, ad, you know abhorrent adolescent behavior. <laughs> Is that, is that a coincidence? I'm sure it has something, if not a lot to do with my, my family uh, breakdown, the breakdown of the family unit um, and all the strife and that came with that. Anyone else can relate to that? <laughs> so yeah, we are here now living proof to say that uh, sacred commitment is real and beautiful and, and powerful and as we like to say, the honeymoon need never end. That's right. Well, it's a sacred container. Mm -hmm. When you have that commitment, it's what really seals the, the energy that you're building together. We have our own container of ourselves as sovereign, whole, complete beings. And then as we come together, we have then this container of a sacred third, our love together. And this is its own entity. It has its own vision its own mission and in mm -hmm. a very big way i feel like we're along for the ride of <laughs> mm -hmm. what this is that we're creating together but because of our commitment we're able to hold the space for that to really flourish mm -hmm. and then we can see what what unfolds from that but if there were any leaks in that container there'd be doubts there'd be fear there'd be yeah. um it, we wouldn't have that sacred container to really explore and grow from. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is, we could, we could call that our love child, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have any physical children as yet. <laughs> and, um, but we have creations. Yeah, well, this is the thing. To, to treat this, this third, it's like Kirtan described it, the third entity as our child, our love child. And like a child is always growing, mm -hmm. comes into being and, and it goes through all the stages of life. Mm -hmm. And conversely, when, when two people, perhaps anyone listening, uh, if you have a child, let us know what, what your thoughts are. Because the, the, the flip side is having a child, to, to see a child in that same light, that a child has come to teach mm -hmm. and um, to show us the way in a sense, in our place, as with a project like our the School of Nod and things that we're fostering together, the, the parent's role then with the child is to provide that space mm -hmm. to listen, to re be receptive, that the child can flourish in every way. You know, obviously to, to provide a certain level of protection. Mm -hmm. I say a certain level because I think it's often the case. Parents naturally, they, they overprotect, overdo it, right? Which yeah, which can be the detrimental. So the same thing then again, we can flip it back to our projects, the, mm -hmm. the project that you create, because our, yeah, our mentoring with couples is all about the mission, right? Mm -hmm. Really cultivating and getting to know, getting a deeper awareness. Of what is your mission together? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, why, why were you brought together in the first place? What is your soul contract with one another and what you're bringing forth in this world? Mm -hmm. What are you here to do? And that's, that's huge. It's huge. And we have a good example of how this, this process keeps unraveling and opening <laughs> last night. Yes. <laughs> so we love to sing. Again, this is what brought us together, our love of the nod, of chanting of song. And uh, <laughs> so sometimes we sing together as if we're in living in a musical, <laughs> as if our life is a musical. In fact, we do it more and more often, I think. All the time. Well, since we definitely moved the last new, 24 hours power. since well, we discovered this too. Well, it, but conditions have changed for us. We moved into a new home, which yeah. feels like a palace to me, especially coming from where we came from. We we're literally in storage. We need to talk about more about that. <laughs> We've come into this new space where everything is open. In fact, we even have more freedom, a lot more freedom to express ourselves through song, even drumming. You know, we don't. We we had some restrictions before about noise level and things like this. So last night we were singing to each other as if our life is a musical, which it is. <laughs> in a sense. 
And there was kind of this aha moment, at least for me, <laughs> that this is a part of our mastery in a sense because we've been doing it. I've I've been doing musical theater my whole almost my whole life. How old are you? Elementary. Okay. So you're only like twelve or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we both started musical theater in our pre adolescence. So it's it's in our blood. You know, this is part of the thing of mastery, right? And what we want to inspire for others too is really getting clear, clear and crystal clear. What is your mastery? Some of the clues are so simple, so obvious, but, you know, <laughs> right in front of our face, and yet we don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We do it so naturally. We we might have to give a demonstration at some point. <laughs> Singing our life. And it brings laughter. The thing about music, right? Even in, even when times are difficult and challenging, when we sing it, to sing our pain, often laughter comes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe tears of sadness and then tears of joy, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Tears of laughter <laughs> can come upon you. Sadness and the joy. The joy. You hear, yeah, it's rare we hear sound of helicopters and planes here. Which is like the, anyhow. And for creative visualization um, and sex magic, we're not so much so far off topic. Uh, ever sing sexual connection with your beloved? <laughs> Singing, yeah. There's another question that we like to ask that is very much related to this. We already gave the clue. How many people laugh, like have real like okay. belly laughter <laughs> during sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. I know, during <laughs> sexual intimacy, we can define it in different ways. But, uh, <laughs> laughter and, and song. Mm -hmm. I've come to believe, <laughs> mm -hmm. feel that if, those, if those two things are not, you know, vacant and uh, missing from the, the equation, laughter can also be Silent. It's, it's, then it's easier to see the beauty, the perfection of pausing. The, this, this, you see this road that has no. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're going to turn the audio we on. are live. Let us know if you can hear us okay. Mm -hmm. If you can see us okay. We're having some technical difficulties. We just got cut off there for some reason, and. And then we saw that the <laughs> the first video that got cut off. Um, the video quality is really poor. We don't know why, because we've had really good transmissions recently. So I want to check, see how it looks this time. So we tuned in in part one, the first video we did today. Now this is part two. Mm -hmm. To be continued. We're not giving up. Facebook will not stop us. <laughs> we will continue. Yeah, we're getting some some trolls. This is really not good. <laughs> and this is uh, why why we wanted to address this theme today. Part of our Soul of Tantra series. Because in a way, that there's there's two ways to look at the the sacred act, if you will, sexual intimacy. One is to see it as de degrading and base, and soulless experience, um, which unfortunately is portrayed very much today in, in advertising, pornography, and such. Or we can see it as divine, mm -hmm. sacred, 
the most sacred act shared between man and woman, two consenting adults. Um, why do we why do we say it's the most sacred? Well, the miracle, the miracle of birth. Right? We don't we do not exist without it. This is the the sacred communion conception birthing. Uh, yeah, a father and mother, a man and woman. It, there's no other way. I mean, you can talk. We can talk about science, and I don't really like to talk about science in terms of you know <laughs> procreation, uh, all the horrible things that modern science has done to make the world a better place. <clears throat> certainly open to debate the sacred act of, of conceiving a child it, for me it doesn't get any more sacred except for the actual birthing and death right marriage <laughs> birth marriage rebirth death mm -hmm. <laughs> So there we have it. I think we should at least do our protective mantra again. Yeah. Subversion. Subversion is the board. Yeah. Close in the sacred space once again. <sighs> first session that got cut off and then after it, it cut out we lost the connection uh, we noticed that the the video quality the first transmission was quite poor very blurry so then so that's when I decided to, to use my iPhone <laughs> which we wanted to put horizontal to get to the same kind of frame that we have now and for some reason <laughs> it wouldn't let us <laughs> and then the reason maybe it was just to challenge my patience and my <laughs> my joyfulness yeah it wouldn't allow the 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 the, the facebook meme was like rotate your phone even though it all it started in that horizontal p position we got the clear picture that we wanted this time however it was sideways <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't go now we're back at the computer. Maybe a little blurry here, but uh... from our end, it looks crystal clear. That's why we didn't we didn't know uh, yeah. before. It appears to be a really good, clear picture. Um, it, the sound quality is is good enough. We're going to work on that as well. We have uh, external mic, but we had some issues with that. As well. So yeah, the cord is broken. That's one of our yeah one of our. Um, direct is one of yeah it it's a bow for for the new year for 2021 are you guys mm -hmm. excited 2021 we're going to get
because we like to we like to deliver the best. <laughs> yeah, and if anybody has any expertise in that, please uh, send us a line. <laughs> we can <Yeah>. use some <laughs> help. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because this never happened before in this series, the Soul of Tantra, mm -hmm. or maybe any time that we've done any kind of live through Soul Book or on subjects related to sacred relating and intimacy. But we had two, so we had two trolls come just mm -hmm. now into this feed, writing some really <laughs> base and juvenile remarks. Uh, we send them love. So we're sending them love. And then we chanted the Michael Chiron Mantra again. So now we're protected. Now we're in our sacred bubble. And if any trolls come on, you will be banned. Just a heads up. Yeah. Soul of Tantra. Here we are back in our series. <laughs> Thank you. Back in. And we are talking about creative visualization for couples. Well, first we're talking about what it means to be in a couple. And that sacred container and how our love is the sacred third it's that love child and we can co-create from that space we can co-create what's coming through both of us individually and then what is meant to be birthed through us our love child our love children our many co-creative mm -hmm. endeavors like the school of nod and our namus and mm -hmm. all the things that we do together and so and he's laughing at me and making me nervous. not laughing <laughs> <laughs> laughing with you <laughs> she gets a little shy sometimes from the camera <laughs> um well we were also speaking about this this non-doing how spirit reveals itself as we hold space for that clarity of communication come, that comes through, which is our, our collective manifestation. It's a non-doing, really, right? Can you guys relate to that? If we try, it doesn't matter if we're speaking about solo, your, your own ambition individually, wanting to conquer the world, whatever, to become, to excel in whatever it is that you want to do in your life or with with your partner the, your sacred partner or business partner doing okay it's a very fine line between doing and being yeah can they relate we call it workaholism there's other ways that did that, that uh, adrenal overload you know doing hyper doing 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 like work the hard that work ethic can actually prevent the, the crystallization of awareness, mm -hmm. what it is you're here to do, and what it is if you're in a sacred relationship, what is your uh, collective mm -hmm. purpose, your soul mission? What is wanting to be birthed through you, together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a simple example could be, um, let's say, maybe a couple. They like they like eating, and <laughs> and they see some opportunities. Maybe they think you know if they see other people maybe doing well, having a, a restaurant or a cafe. So they decide, well, maybe we should do that too. We can we can have success. We can serve them. It's not their real calling. So all kinds of problems come up, mm -hmm. right? they realize that, you know, running a restaurant, even a small restaurant, is a huge endeavor, it requires a lot of patience, a lot of commitment, it's hard work at times, you know. And again, the analogy is that through that misadventure, <laughs> they learned that the restaurant business wasn't their sole mission together. In some way, inadvertently, they, they find out, hopefully, right, before they burn themselves out and, and just, you know, 
use up all their resources, you know, in a failed enterprise. And sometimes, you know, we need to we need to fail in order to grow. Yeah? There is much, There's no no such thing as failure. There's no. only lessons. There's success and there's lessons. And lessons lead us to success. There is no failure. Good news. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's see if we have any nice comments. No comments so far. Well, we left off. We still we left the previous part one on the School of Nod page. You can check out if you're listening mm -hmm. at a later time. We left off speaking about the sacred act and how sex magic can apply to creative visualization, creating the life of your highest mm -hmm. dreams and uh, spirit calling, soul calling. And how with, with music, we were about to share some sacred nod sound current, crystal bowl and such. Yeah, when, when we come to to know that the beauty, the joy, the tantric bliss of shared sound current, be it with the bowl, for example. Voices, laughter together, we talk about laughing in the sacred act, singing. Then we can see that, yeah, that taking a break sometimes, this example, if, if, if you are engaged in, in intimacy with your partner and for whatever reason, one of you wants to just kind of step back and relax. This would be a good um, segue, a good alternative. Bring out the, the bowl and chant together. Or maybe one person wants to chant while the other person receives. Mm -hmm. Some of these bowls, like the handheld bowls, we can actually apply to the body as well. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's good to relax, especially engaging in Tantra. Mm. Tantra is all about being relaxed in any and every situation. True Tantric master is the most relaxed <laughs> in any given situation. Yeah, and for us, um, chanting together is sublime, <laughs> reveals a lot, uh, again, helps to, to shape, give form to our, our purpose together and our, our highest path. Um, and thus, when we are engaged in, in tantric union, it is more overt red tantra or white tantra, just chanting, being closed, chanting together. We can call upon this magic, the magic which is the tantric union. You can call it sex magic to bring into manifestation our highest vision for ourselves mm -hmm. and for community. Mm -hmm. Yes, as we know, through the law of attraction, but we focus on expanse and we each have this power within us and we can visualize our dreams and maybe some of you experienced really miraculous manifestations that you know you created through your power of visualization. It could be healings. And so when we bridge our powers and come together with a shared vision, a shared, very clear vision of what we're calling in, then it not only just adds one plus one equals two, it's exponential. Mm -hmm. Exponential. <laughs> to infinity. <laughs> and then add the joy and the bliss and the ecstasy of the love making and Yeah, that's why we say that to the power of two. Mm -hmm. this, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. You know? When two people are aligned, mm -hmm aligned with the same vision, the same intention, and bringing the power of union into that equation. Yes. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, not to be attached. This is the other thing. Of yes. course, we learned from the, from the yoga practice. We spoke about that, the foundation, which is uh, yoga and meditation. We're not attached to any outcome. At the same time, we're, we're cultivating this divine acceptance of what is. Because what is, is divine and is a blessing, everything. Sometimes we forget, we overlook the um, all the blessings in our lives, all the things to be grateful for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very concrete example of this. Who, of course, um, about nine months that... that perfect gestation period, we were living in a smaller space relative to, relative to where we are now. It didn't feel so small. Somehow we were able to <laughs> yeah. expand that the diameter, the parameters of I mean, it's a garden and so forth. Um, and we didn't complain about it. We, were, we weren't in a negative state about it. In fact, we were enjoying we were it, celebrating there, yeah. yeah, it was our kind of pack, you know, packing and lockdown. We you spent know, quarantine in yeah. a small space. Together. Yeah, so it was quite special that way. And now, through that acceptance and moving through that stage, a necessary stage, and, and embracing the, the, you know, sex magic, you know, and other techniques that we're speaking of in the Soul Tantra, Tantra Soul of Tantra series, here we are, we, the, the moment came where after the nine months gestation, we were ready to mm -hmm. re rebirth ourselves into a new 
palace. It feels like a palace. Yeah, and it was really a, an offer that was gifted to us. Yeah. It wasn't publicized. We didn't seek it out. It just, <laughs> the offer landed in our laps, and we went, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. And now we feel like we're unpacking our lives. We're unpacking all our lives. Um, really feel like we're unpacking and opening up and And it's because we are in that state of gratitude. So my suggestion to anyone watching, particularly a couple that may not know exactly just yet what your shared mission is together. If you're not crystal clear on that just yet, don't worry. <laughs> just focus on gratitude, focus on what you do have and cultivate as much love and gratitude around that as possible. Because the universe really responds to gratitude. And I believe that the more grateful we are, the more the universe gives us to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. That's why we say um, to our students that it's, it's not so much the what. I mean, certainly when we're employing uh, the the technique we call creative visualization, whether in a sex magic way or not, um, not so important to focus on what what it is you're calling in, the specifics. Mm -hmm. If things show up, that's great. Like you get a clear picture of your your home, for example, of your future home where you're where you're going to be, maybe on the coast, or a vacation, you know, or up in the mountain. More important, really, mostly important for us is the feeling. What is the feeling? And this is why, you know, obviously why sex magic can mm -hmm. <laughs> add a, a whole dimension to this. Um, cultivating ecstasy and bliss. Because for us, the soul, the, I'm going to say the soul of attraction, the law of attraction <laughs> is this. It is about how... Do we feel? How do you want to feel? Because when we, as we cultivate deeper awareness, deeper bliss, mm -hmm. that grace that inspires bliss, con real true contentment in life, then the universe has no choice but to provide us with all the means mm -hmm. to support us in staying in bliss, in that bliss mm -hmm. and, and to expand this is the law, law of tantra really which is expansion liberation the more we really hone into that true essential bliss contentment the more like a flower just the whole universe our whole life just blossoms mm -hmm. and all of these amazing opportunities literally come to us we didn't mm -hmm. like sad kirtan said we didn't plan this we didn't even really speak mm -hmm. about it at all, just the, the time. Just earlier that yeah. same day, our friend was like, "Are you guys thinking about moving at all?" We said, "No, we're really happy where we are. We have no <laughs> desire to go anywhere." And then mm -hmm. the offer came. <laughs> and it's funny because almost immediately the shift happened, right? As we moving spaces, and we, we literally didn't have to move very far physically. That's the other cool thing. And now looking back, I, I can't even go there now because, in retrospect, it's behind us now. It's our, like our old life. It doesn't apply anymore, right? It's interesting. The it time like years it was ago. At the time it was perfect. <laughs> it served its purpose perfectly, and now it's past. Yeah. Yeah. Like way past. Yes. <laughs> Feels like forever ago. Yeah. Lifetimes ago. And and already we've seen signs, many indications. This is the other thing with creative visualization. We can look for those signs, and of course, keeping notes, journaling. We always recommend. Uh, with our clients and students, to, to see the signs, proof, if you will, the evidence right, that, that the shift is happening. We've seen many signs already, mm -hmm. too many to count. Really. Yeah, it's all feedback. So we can, you know, like our, we discussed in session two, creating that, uh, building our stamina and our sensitivity, we become almost superhuman and we're able to really sense and pick up on these little subtle signs and it's feedback. It's feedback to us of where we're steering away or getting back on course. And one of the biggest feedbacks 
that we receive is that ecstasy, joy, bliss. We actually mm. receive that back as mm. feedback that we're we're on the right track, that we're in mm. alignment with our soul. Because the soul wants to be in alignment with yes. our destiny. Yeah, and again, unfortunately, because we we we're touching on some sacred issues, mm. including sex magic, tantra, um, the unfortunate thing is we sometimes we attract trolls mm -hmm. who approach sex in that very base, you know, lower centered way, which is unfortunate. Um, because they're missing out. They're missing out on the greater <laughs> immaculate conception, the rebirth that happens through the ideal divine tantric path which is that life itself becomes orgasmic. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, even washing the dishes, <laughs> can become an orgasmic experience, shared or not shared, being alone, singing. We like to sing. Singing while washing the dishes. While we're washing the dishes. <laughs> you know, we can play sacred music, our own recordings, or we can, we can sing out loud, mm -hmm. sing along. You know, uh, one of us may be playing while the other person is cooking. And we make it into a, a sacred act. Mm -hmm. and this is the power, right? The, the sex magic then again blossoms. We, we see that it, it's infusing everything that we do. And our thoughts, words, and actions about integrity to impeccability. Right? Mm -hmm. to, to maintain. To... Orgasm can be described, could be defined quite clearly. Uh, as kundalini. It is the raising of the kundalini to, to pierce the, the crown chakra. Say so this is enlightenment, this is bliss, this is orgasm, divine orgasm. To have uh, kundalini awaken and, and flowing through us, then how to maintain it again takes practice and having that foundation that's like here, except here to mention and, and having our, our practice mm -hmm. to maintain that. And contain it. And contain it. <laughs> Not just let it spill out in the lower chakras, to actually contain it and mm. allow it to rise through the heart. The secret is right there in the heart. Mm. Yeah. That's where true bliss is achieved. Mm -hmm. Not just satisfying the need. Yeah, so I'm not getting any comments right now, but that's okay. We're, we're going to save this. And, uh, <laughs> and thanks to the trolls again. I mean, yeah, it's funny because it's... The, we bless the trolls. We are on the verge. Yeah, we are, on the, we are on the verge of a massive awakening. The great awakening is upon us. We can all feel it. The solstice has revealed more of that. And it's just lights. We're, the whole planet is being bathed in photonic energy, yeah, solar flares and such, and just light from the great central sun. So, of course, the dark is to be revealed. That's part of the process. Don't get discouraged if you see trolls in any shape or form, individually, collectively. You know, <laughs> this hat. This is part of the the healing, part of that awakening process. So the dark has to be exposed for what it is. I made the analogy not too long ago about dark room, the, you know, the, the way photographs used to be mm. made in a dark room in that liquid solution, mm. where the picture slowly reveals itself. And sometimes we, what we see first is the shadow. Negative. The negative space. Before we can see the, the, the foreground, which is the actual subject, we see the, 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 the negative space, the shadow. Mm -hmm. It's a good analogy. Don't get discouraged. And it can come up in sexual union. This is one of the reasons why can people can get really triggered by sacred connection, especially if, if you're not in a committed relationship. If you don't have you have already established trust with that person, imagine, right? If you if you're the type, I don't you know when I was younger in the past, maybe jump into into bed with somebody that you hardly know, and then write some some dark kind of memories, whatever visions come up, it can be pretty frightening. And we might 
immediately think, oh, that, this person's bad, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know this person. They're, maybe they're feeling the same thing. And then, the, you know, it just can create more of a, it's like, it could be like a bad ayahuasca mm -hmm. journey or bad LSD trip. You know, sex has that power, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is why we, you know, we're very much about cultivating trust, safety from day one, you know, in all relationships. A sacred Especially, container. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the, in the, you know, the romantic, uh, intimate mm -hmm. relationship. So important, you know? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of healing that can happen. And we speak about manifestation. Part of the manifestation can be for healing. Mm -hmm. And to really go there, we need to feel, especially for the woman, held and safe in her partner's arms. If the woman doesn't feel safe, forget it. She can't, she can't even relax <laughs> at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Well, we could say, yeah, that the woman is being, representing that the sacred feminine is the, the receptive one, the one who could perhaps, um, in a sacred tantric union, again, not necessarily red tantra could be right the the main point though is like sad kirtan just mentioned is that she is held she's supported she feels totally safe and supported then and perhaps only then she can embark on that journey into higher realms if you will where the light language emanates from right speaking in tongues it happens right anybody watching <laughs> type yes <clears throat> if you can relate and this is the beauty light language is interesting because we, we both explored this together uh, now for some time um, the communication isn't always clear right away because because the language seems very different and, and uh, foreign and yet there is communication there to be deciphered at, on some level, whether it's conscious or not. So again, this is that same phenomenon of, yeah, the magic of, of union and communion where new codes, new language can come through, messages, mm -hmm. yeah. Visions. Mm. Yes, of course, if you're visual, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see visions, songs, and you you, you open your channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some people are more visually oriented. Sometimes we we have visuals. Other times it's more auditory, you know, sentient. So we have to be open to all of those those various stimuli inputs. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we like to say. Again, coming back to our, our our foundation, which is Kundalini Yoga, Nad Yoga, that to become sensory or super sensory beings, then we are receiving, then the, the whole, all our entire sensory system becomes heightened, intuitive system, or we, we can literally receive those more subtle messages, yeah, and codes from the various realms, higher realms. So, we need to tune our instrument. That's it. <laughs> We are all a crystal seeing the world. <laughs> we each have our own unique vibration, our own sound current that we emanate. So it's clearing and tuning our own instruments. We can swing our true song. Song of the soul. <laughs> this is like, you know, we have like the chalice, the chalice and the blade, one of the oldest, um, Certainly, for me, the oldest you know, mm -hmm. metaphors for the sacred union, right? mm -hmm. the chalice and the blade. And it's funny, we will chant Om Mani Padme Hum to, to go out because mm -hmm. I always get a, a bit of a chuckle from this. So, you know, a lot of Buddhists are, are uptight. Not all Buddhists, but <laughs> some are uptight about <laughs> anything to do with sex. So, Brings me no end of 
laughter humor when, when I think of this the key perhaps the key Buddhist mantra Om Mani Padme Hum literally translates as what the jewel in the lotus what is the jewel in the lotus yes we're talking about the lingam and the yoni the chalice and the blade <laughs> so let's chant <laughs> So whether you're um, in full red tantric mode as a couple, or you could be just sitting in the lotus position together, female resting on the male, um, with or without you know, full penetration, the, mo the most important penetration is here, isn't it? The heart, the heart connection. So you would be facing each other, and then we're not. But, uh, <laughs> and then chanting, chanting Om Mani Padme Hum, like, it's good, right? <laughs> the jewel and the lotus. And from that lotus, the jewel and the lotus connection, Lingam Yoni, physically and or energetically, then this gives rise to the essence, the, the fragrance of the, the yoni blossom, the thousand petaled lotus blossoming, the heart, the crown chakra, enlightenment can be yours, even for a moment, right? This we could define orgasm again is enlightenment. Kundalini, we, we like to call it kundalini the science of enlightenment. It is a science. Be practiced and mastered, but for and for most people, orgasm, as we define it, <laughs> as it was defined, perhaps erroneous, is a momentary experience. It comes, it's gone, right? <laughs> There's this glimpse. So perhaps we have that moment, right? This glimpse of of the divine, of the ekonkar, and it's gone. This is why Yogi Bhajan, among those, came along to say, wait a second, 
you know, you don't have to have this momentary, you don't have to, so here to mention, you know, lose all of your essence, your Jing, to use the Chinese term, because, you know, using drugs, same effect, marijuana, he said, stop doing that, right? You're going to deplete your kidneys, your essence, you're going to grow old prematurely, and lose your vitality and all these things, right? Don't be fooled. Instead, cultivate, cultivate Kundalini. Uh, cherish it. Commit yourself really to that Kundalini itself. This is the Kundalini Yoga practice, really, right? It's a commitment to our divine nature, which is God. God manifests in the physical, and all the subtleties that are in this indescribable that we can only hint at it right that's why we, we love the poets or the roomies right hafiz to describe that subtle presence of awareness it's really beyond words as in light language you know she's a little shy today Om Mani Padme. Om Mani Om Mani Om Mani Om Watch that. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a tendency, because we you see this a lot. I've been teaching Kundalini Yoga for 25 years now, so I see this a lot in, in the yoga class. People do this, right? You lift the chin up. I think partly because you're taller than me. I know, it's partially because that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, but, the, you know, it's a, it's a very normal thing. I know, I, I always saw a tiny bit here. But, um, like when we're doing spinal flexion, some people do this, they want to do this, right? Yeah, the chin's coming way up too high. And what happens when we, we lift the chin up too high, then the, the back of the neck, I, the, the cervical spine, is compressed. Right? We're literally closing that all important passageway, right, which is the throat chakra up to the pituitary, the pineal. So we have the silver cord, they call it silver cord and the gold cord, right? And then the Godhead, right? The, the thousand petal lotus we spoke to. So this can apply in again in sexual practice as well. It's sex magic, right? All of these we, we like to say applied kundalini yoga, right? To be aware aware of posture, because for a lot of people, we what we call the yab yam position, which is the seated position, is not doable for a lot of people. Yeah, in in terms of any long, you know, or expanded, extended sexual union, right, to be able to sit together in that position. It looks like we have another <laughs> for these people. Um, anyway, so I have to ban another troll. Bye-bye, Rio. Thank God. Okay. 
<laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. This this is not Pornhub. I, I think some people I think came somehow to to Facebook and to our page looking for something base. Um, and it's interesting, right? Because they can easily go to any one of thousands of porn sites online, many of which are offering free content. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> what were we saying about? Well, we do um, work with couples. Oh, and we work with we couples. We were talking about yab yum and other techniques that couples can do together. Mm. And so if you are a couple mm. or even a single, we have a master class for you. We have a brand new master class specifically for couples. And we have our oldie but goldie master class for singles. So if you go to our website, schoolofnod.com, you can either click the button for singles or for couples. And then there's two different master classes there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll put the link. So we go a little bit deeper into this and you can start to learn how you can explore these things. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had a lot of fun uh, producing the, math, the new masterclass, which is called Five Keys. To everlasting bliss and sacred partnership. Even if you feel the honeymoon is over. Amen. It's not too late, okay? We never end. Check it out and, and get back to us. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or feedback, any good feedback, <laughs> more than happy to respond. We always respond in the appropriate way. We had to ban a few people. and <laughs> That was the appropriate okay. response. Yeah. <laughs> and life goes on. <laughs> So well, thank blessings, you. everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Satnam. We'll be back next week, hopefully with all the tech issues mm -hmm. taken care of. Same time. We'll start at around 12 p.m., 12, 12 p.m. <laughs> Eastern <laughs> time next Tuesday, which is <laughs> the first Tuesday in January. That's right. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year, everybody. Which blessings, is uh, the 5th. I think the January the 5th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll see a long time sunshine song. Bless you in the day.
Bangsat, short now. So. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. See you next year. <laughs> See you in a week.